Hey, what's up, studs? Ryan here from MNR Productions, and welcome to Ask MNR episode 126. This is where I answer your questions about anything you really want to ask, so you can leave them in the comment section below, but most of it will probably pertain to LEGO because that's what most of my channel is about. So I hope you guys enjoy, and we have a ton of questions as usual. So let's get started with our first question from Poja. There seems to be a shortage on LEGO everywhere in stores right now because of the pandemic, and they essentially want to know when all of this LEGO <laughs> seems to be out of stock is going to be back in stock and it could be a while right it just really depends on when all of lego's factories get back and running at full strength again i mean that is the true answer to that because i believe right now the mexico factory is shut down and i'm sure all of the other factories are working at a a reduced pace so you're seeing that there are just less lego sets available and of course with so many people buying them right now it creates quite a mix where you do have this shortage and it kind of sucks very recently like within these last couple days some people have been finding new lego sets at target but they have stickers over them so that Lego can sell them in the US because otherwise they wouldn't have like the piece count and everything that they're supposed to have that fits with US regulations. So Lego is doing some things to combat the shortage, but more specifically to like bigger direct to consumer sets, you're you're gonna have a tough time finding those if that's what you're looking for. I'm not sure because you didn't say exactly what sets you're looking for, but like if you're looking for Lego Star Wars UCS sets or big direct to consumer sets like the Harry Potter Hogwarts Castle, apparently the production on those has been kind of cut for now because they're trying to just make as much as possible of like the other things, I guess. Well, like the they just, I don't know, that seems to be what's happening is that they've kind of cut production of the bigger stuff while still trying to produce as much of like the lower end stuff as possible. If you lower end makes it sound cheap or bad, but the, the other products. But yeah, it could take months before we start seeing some of this stuff again. It just it just depends on when, uh, when Lego's factories are running at full strength or when the factories get around to the specific product you may be looking for. Ryan wants to know what my least favorite Star Wars show is. It is by far Star Wars Resistance. Uh, that thing was, I watched maybe one episode and just never touched it again. Shoto says, why did Lego have a short period where they didn't give male figures hair, like with Avatar and Speed Racers? Or are you referring to when they printed hair onto heads? Is that what you mean by not having hair? Because I think what they were trying to accomplish by printing it on the heads was giving the hair a styled look that they have in something like Avatar, where the hair doesn't like cover all the sides and everything, and it's maybe just like the, the middle section or whatever. It's the little mohawk thing or whatever they have going on in Avatar, which been watching by the way four episodes in pretty good i bought the fire nation boat review later this week or next week but i couldn't tell you why other than that they were probably just experimenting to see what it would look like and how consumers would react 88 dj says they most likely have the gunship tie bomber nebulon made we just voted on what came first so i've kind of covered this in some videos a couple months back but you're implying that you think that the tie bomber gunship and nebulon b frigate will all be made in ucs form i think that this isn't true because in past lego star wars ucs fan votes only about 50 percent of the sets you voted on, at least to date, obviously the future is kind of infinite and they could do anything, but um, at least to date, it's been about 15 years since the, the UCS vote prior to this, and I believe only about half the sets ever got made. So it is no guarantee that we voted on what's coming first. I think that's a bit of a stretch, unfortunately, uh, maybe for some Nebulon fans. I don't think the Nebulon is going to happen in a UCS form. I just don't see it. Jaden Gamer says, who thinks there should be a UCS Corporate Alliance tank droid? I agree. I think, I think the CIS needs some representation in UCS form because I don't think we've gotten anything. Now, that being said, I think an MTT would be so much cooler in UCS form or maybe even uh, a droid control ship. Things like that could work better than a Corporate Alliance tank droid, but I wouldn't be opposed to it. That's a pretty cool idea. Nick Reichman says, do you think there will be more sets with 501st Troopers? So, Bit of a tough question because I think there is one set that obviously could have 501st Troopers for the summer 2020, and that's the AAT. It could have a 501st Trooper, and it just could. That being said, I don't think so. I think at least for this wave of summer sets, the only set with a 501st Trooper in it is going to be the 501st Legion Clone Troopers Battle Pack type set. I don't think we're going to see them in any other sets unless there's a big surprise that I just don't know about. For 2021 and beyond, like I said earlier, the future is kind of infinite. They can do anything. There's probably a decent chance at some point again that we'll get 501st Trooper in a set. I just don't know what it could be. I think most people would rather see a figure like a 332nd Trooper within the AAT just to kind of spice it up since we already have the battle pack. Caspi Bear 12 says, if you could cancel a theme that is active right now, what would it be and why? Lego Ninjago. Everyone just got triggered. <laughs> 
<laughs> oh no. I'm telling you, Monkey Kid is coming. Monkey Kid might not be in its final form yet. Monkey Kid just started and it's already like 9 out of 10. Ninjago's like 7 out of 10. Monkey Kid is a is two steps above Ninjago when it just started. I'm telling you, Monkey Kid is gonna be great if it continues like it is right now. It could be incredible, and especially if they eventually branch it out and start selling it at normal stores that aren't just Lego stores, because right now in the US and I think Europe as well, it may just be a Lego store exclusive. But once we start seeing these in Targets and Walmarts, I think they catch on big. That's my hot take. I'm telling you, my hot take is that Monkey Kid will kill Ninjago, and why not cancel it now? It's been too damn long. It's been like 10 years, it's time for Ninjago to end. No, but seriously, I would cancel Ninjago, I think. I don't have an interest in, in the sets. There are a lot of sets that they make, and I just... None of the sets that weren't the Ninjago movie sets have ever really caught my eye. And I don't know what it is about the theme that just doesn't really uh, connect for me, but there's just something there that doesn't connect for me. Maybe it's because the designs aren't as streamlined, especially vehicle designs that are very streamlined. And I feel like Ninjago doesn't really have that. There's a lot of messiness to those builds, which is great for people that like that. But uh, for someone like me, I don't really find myself attracted to that. So I would cancel Ninjago. Goodbye, Ninjago. Percy Pig says, do you think they're going to do more clone legions as battle packs? Honestly, with as many people keep asking me for like 212th battle pack, like, and we've already had that. I don't see why they wouldn't do that if this is a really big success. It would be really nice if they just kind of made it a yearly thing where they had a $30 clone battle pack or maybe if they could drop the price a little bit, wouldn't hurt. But seriously though, something like this on the year in and year out type of thing where we get some type of army builder at this higher price wouldn't be terrible. Maybe next year we get a snow trooper one that has two rebel troopers opposing it. That would be really neat. So you get two rebel troopers, four snow troopers, like a snow trooper speed and then maybe even a rebel vehicle and then it can be this giant versus pack and that would be really good honestly I think it does seem like it's kind of open-ended where they could do it like, I think the set's official name is like file first legion clone troopers so there's no reason that in a year or two they couldn't make a set called 327th legion clone troopers you know like it seems like it could be that type of thing where we start to see these year in and year out and that would just be amazing Zim says are you ever going to try to buy the actual largest lego set the ultimate battle for Chima I think only three people have one and I doubt all three of them open the box no I am not going to try to buy that set I don't like Shima. I definitely don't want the biggest ultimate Shima set that there's only three of, and God knows how much you'd have to pay for that. They'd probably pay you to take it because Shima's that bad. Lincoln says, who is your best friend that is a Lego YouTuber? I That's a tough question for me to answer. I don't feel like I have like a best friend. Like, I guess from the outside looking in, you'd just say like Just Too Good or Brick Attack, and I guess those are probably like two of my better friends in the Lego world, but I... I don't know if I've ever had like a best friend. I just, I, yeah, I don't, I don't, I don't think I have a best friend. I've never thought of it that way with anybody. Max says, what set do you think had way less pieces than you thought it would? I have one very recent example and that is the Iron Man helmet. It has, in my opinion, significantly less pieces than all of the Star Wars helmets. So uh, I would say that that's the example. It just has way less pieces than I would have thought. Brandon says, I want to get Captain Rex minifigure, but I can't find one on Amazon. That's not a hundred dollars plus. Oh my god, Brandon, do not buy old retired Lego stuff on Amazon for the love of God. This is my this is my rallying cry. Every time someone brings this up, I gotta drill it into y'all. Do not buy, do not buy retired Lego stuff on Amazon. Minifigures, sets, poly bags, you see it, whatever it would be. Don't buy it on Amazon. It will always, 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 always cost you more. That being said, it's going to be hard to find a Captain Rex minifigure. I'm, I'm assuming you're looking for the one that was in the 75012 uh, Bark Speeder sidecar set. And it's going to be hard to find find that minifigure for less than $100 anywhere. But Amazon, you're going to be paying a premium. Do not buy retired stuff on Amazon. If it's not being sold directly from Amazon, you paid too much. Seriously, go on eBay. Go on Bricklink, shop around, be patient, and you'll find yourself a better deal, I'm telling you. Maybe it won't be a great deal. Maybe you'll only get it for $97, but it'll be better than the 120 or whatever you're gonna pay on Amazon. God, I hate Amazon third-party sellers. Nothing gets me more angry than third-party sellers on Amazon, Target, and Walmart. I, I cannot believe, especially Target. For the Target has third-party sellers now. It's, it's disgusting. Colin says, will you ever review the old alternate sets you could also build on the box? I like that idea. That's something I could do in like a decade from now or something when I, when, when it's all said and done. Uh, I got too much going on right now to, to do that, but that's that would be really cool to go through. And some of those don't have instructions, so it would take a lot of like figuring out and tinkering to like get the model built. But 
it's on the table. I, I wouldn't say no to that. That sounds really fun. And there are some alternate models that I am interested in that I've seen on the back of some of my old Lego set boxes. So I'm not gonna say no to that, but obviously not anywhere in the near future. Go Bright Bricks says, Ryan, what is your weirdest habit? I carry socks in my pocket. I don't know about the socks thing, but my weirdest habit, I, I don't even know if it's a habit. I, I tried really hard to think of something because I think most people think everything they do is normal, right? So maybe there is something I do that you find weird. Obviously I find carrying socks in your pocket just kind of weird but maybe there's something you can see from the outside looking in that I can't see that is kind of a weird habit I, I just couldn't tell you what I would think is weird that I do playing with my eye floaters like if I'm like because I'll like get and I'll look around and like I'm watching my floaters zip around and I'm sure if you're watching me do that it looks hella weird but from my point of view I'm watching these things fly around and I'm losing my mind. Photograph by John Knight says are stickers counted as Lego bricks when they label it on the set? I'm gonna tell you you answered your own question in that sentence. Are stickers a sticker counted as Lego bricks? A Lego brick? A sticker. Sticker? Lego brick. Two different things, right? No, they're not counted. They don't count. Neither does the instruction manual or the box. <laughs> like, <laughs> Lego bricks, yes. Anything else? No. Harper Holt says, who is your favorite characters in Rebels? I would probably say Zeb right now. I really like his character in his, char oh, Carabast or whatever the heck. And he's it's totally supposed to be a curse word, I think, from the context it's being used in from what I've picked up. I like Zeb. He seems like a cool guy. He's purple. Gavin W says, what defines a Lego minifigure having dual molded legs? If you watch Lego Masters, it's time for Lego Learn. So I have a example for you here. So we're gonna look at a Hoth Rebel Trooper from 2009. You can see those are just plain white legs there, right? Nothing going on fancy. But if we bring in Monkey Kid, you can see how there's kind of a two-tone factor to that. So you have red on the top and black on the bottom. And essentially, instead of like it being printed on, it's literally hard molded into the leg. Like it is black and then red dual molded and together you can see that very easily how they kind of combine versus if it was all one color It's just white there or if it was printed they wouldn't print on the back of the leg So it would still be all red all the way down two colors of plastic together to create one piece Mel Decker says do you think they would actually make a remake of the clone walker battle pack from 2009 they didn't imperial dropship battle pack remake I don't see why anything else like that would be off the table I mean a lot of those early battle packs are becoming very expensive and very desirable so I think Lego obviously will see that market and be inclined to at least look at the possibility of doing a, a remake or reissue in some way of a set like that so fingers crossed we do see something like that in the future because I would love to relive those days. Darth Luxter says would you want to see a remake of the TIE Defender now that you've watched it in Star Wars Rebels? Hell yeah bro, hell yeah dude hated the TIE Defender. I bought that set in 2009, came out in 2010, hated that set with all, oh my god, and it's not that bad, it's not that bad, it was 55 bucks for 3 or 4 pieces though, and I think back in the day I just did not like that, um, neat feature though, where the, the cockpit kind of can be stationary as you spin the wings around it, but I broke mine, like literally the pieces broke, so I have to replace some pieces to, uh, to, to fix my set, but yeah, I would totally be down for a remake and I would love to make that comparison video. It's, it's a really neat and unique ship. Zaya Anderson says, when buying retired sets, why do you prefer to spend a premium and buy sets sealed rather than getting a complete set unboxed for a lot less? It is very nice to save money. However, for what I do, I feel like it's very worth it. And as a filthy collector, as I like to call myself, I want it sealed, like I just do. I want it in perfect condition out of the box as it would have been if I were to buy it when it came out, right? Like that's how I want to, present the set to myself and to my viewers. The problem is I don't want to buy a set that's super dusty and disgusting and there are times when you don't want to do that and I've gotten tired of that and it takes time to clean those things and to me time and obviously time is money right so if you're gonna spend three hours cleaning a set why not spend the extra thirty dollars and get it sealed right and then you don't have to spend three hours cleaning the set you've saved yourself a lot of hassle for that thirty dollars and obviously bigger sets can cost a lot more sealed than they would use so obviously there's a bigger trade-off there but even still I just find it a lot better to be buying them sealed for me personally and as a collector in the future I want to have glass shelves and everything I don't want to have to clean all my sets I want to put them in glass shelves I want them to be perfect like they are out of the box and never have to like worry about cleaning them like it takes a lot of time to clean and I don't even clean that stuff very often like there is some there's a lot of dust there and especially up on the higher shelves that I get to even less frequently it gets really bad so um the future where I have glass shelves and the, the reason I'm buying sealed bought sealed sets is so that I have these perfect specimens of sets to put in the glass shelves 
so that there is no dust. It's a controlled environment, essentially. There's basically three or four reasons that have combined. I've just basically stopped buying used Lego sets. And Taylor says, if you could, would you want to have every Lego set that you currently own back in the sealed box? Absolutely. I'd do it, I'd do it in a heartbeat. It sucked to rebuild it all, but I would do it, no questions asked, done, right? Now, a couple of reasons. It instantly increases the value of everything I own. Not that I would plan on really selling all of this stuff, I would just rebuild it and put it in glass cases like I was mentioning earlier. But the other reason is so that I can rebuild it and put it in glass cases and no dust. I don't have to clean anything, everything is like perfect condition forever, right? So yes, I would absolutely do it in a heartbeat. Chatugi says, what Star Wars vehicle doesn't have a set that you would like to see? I think there's a vehicle from Star Wars Battlefront, like the original Star Wars Battlefront from the Rebel side of things that I would really love to see. It's like a Rebel combat tank. And it was like rumored like a couple years ago, but it was a fake rumor. So it never came to fruition, obviously. But that's one that I would love to see just for like the fact that I played the game and liked the ship from the game. And I don't think it's ever been in the movie or anything, but it would be a really interesting set like a $40 price point or something like that, maybe 50. It's kind of, it'd be like pirate tank sized. So probably a little more expensive, but yeah, it, that's a ship I would like to see. Anyway, guys, that is it for Ask Coming Our Productions episode 126. If y'all enjoyed, hit that like button. If you're new to the channel, subscribe. And if you have a question for next week's episode that you want answered, you can leave it in the comments section below on this video and I'll be reading through them and picking them for the next episode. So thank you all for watching and I'll see you next week.